Welcome back folks, this is Shane. Just a quick update video on the BenQ PD322U. Is that it? PD3225U. This was a 32 inch 4K display that was sent out for a review sometime in 2024. It was around mid-year or something like that. Now at the time, I said that the day will come where I end up upgrading from my 27 inch iMac, which was an Intel i7 2020 model to the Mac Studio. So I've been using this setup now for the last two weeks and I thought I'd share with you my experience on this monitor and what you need to know. Now, thank you everybody who subscribed and commented from my last video on this screen. Put a lot of work into that video. This is just a quick update on some of the frequently asked questions I had. So what's the overall editing experience like with this? I love it. I absolutely love it. The image quality is top notch. I love the low glare screen. I've got two lights pointing this way and two pointing this way right now. And as you can see, the screen has very low glare on it. So that's fantastic. Now, if you're a Final Cut editor or if you're working with Pixelmator or any sort of image manipulation program, then I think you'll get a kick out of this. Now, a few of the things I saw come up was I can't get either the brightness buttons to work or I can't get the volume control to work from the keyboard. But if you install the BenQ Pilot software, you can absolutely adjust the brightness with the keyboard. And of course, you can do the same thing with the volume of the built-in speakers. So that's awesome. And I'm doing this all via HDMI. I'm not actually using the Thunderbolt connector on the back. So that's awesome. You just need to make sure you download the new software, version two, not version one. Version one sees the screen as like a generic monitor you actually wanna make sure you're getting Display Pilot 2. I'll link down to that in the description box. While I've really enjoyed using the BenQ PD3225U, I think that's right, <laughs> monitor as my everyday driver when it comes to the, my monitor, there's only one thing about it that kinda of lets it down a little bit, but I feel like I'm used to it now and it's not as big of a deal breaker as I first thought. So obviously you can see I've got studio monitors here. The speakers built into the monitor aren't great and I've been editing externally via a Focusrite sound card with these monitors, but I've also been using the built-in monitors on the screen and I'm used to them now. So the great news is if you've got a Mac Studio and this, you can of course run audio out via the 3.5 millimeter audio connector or get an external sound card and power some speakers. I don't think as of right now, I'm gonna go to the Mac Studio display. The only thing that really kind of felt like I was missing out on were the better speakers. I'm getting a smaller display that has more glare. Now you can pay the extra, whatever it is, $500 Australian for the glare-free experience with the Mac Studio display, but I actually like this more because it's larger. Sometimes having a little bit more physical real estate on a screen is worthwhile. Now, some could argue 4K versus 5K, all that kind of stuff, I get it. But I'm mostly working with up to 6K open gate maximum, but my exports are all 4K and working with it in conjunction with my Mac Studio down here has been an absolute breeze and dream. I absolutely love using it to the point where I don't think I'll be getting a Mac Studio display anytime soon. Once I sorted out the ability to get the speakers to function just by using the keyboard, it really made me appreciate the overall user experience of this display. And you can, of course, hook it up via Thunderbolt if you want access to those extra ports on the side of the screen, like the USB ports and so forth. But for me, this setup has been really great to work with. Now this Mac Studio that I purchased is an older generation one, but I got it for half price, brand new, and it's completely transformed my workflow. It's so much <laughs> more efficient than working with my Intel i7 iMac that I had a while back. It's like not even close. My productivity has gone through the roof and I think I'm gonna share with you a little bit about this computer and why you might wanna look at getting one of these instead of maybe one of the new Mac minis. Not to say there's anything wrong with those, but if you're a video editor, or image editor, I think you'll get a kick out of this particular computer. But more on that in a future video. Drop a thumbs up if you can. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.